Kungen, Naken, Yanan. Welcome to Ngarinjiri Rui. The Kurong, it means a lot to the Ngarinjiri people. We call it Karang, meaning a long thin neck of water which connects from the ocean and the lakes. My name is Derek Gollan. I'm an elder of the Ngarindiri people. I was bred and born down at Point Maclay. I've done a lot of work on the Coorong, having grown up around there. The Coorong and Lakes Alexandrina and Albert are at the very end of the Murray-Darling Basin, Australia's largest river system. It is here, at the end of the river's journey, that the fresh waters meet the sea. At its southern end, the Coorong also receives water flow from the southeast through Salt Creek. As you can see, the River Murray, Lakes Alexandrina and Albert, the Coorong and the Great Southern Ocean are all connected and changes in one can lead to changes in another. The Coorong and Lakes is a complex of freshwater, estuarine and hypersaline water bodies, in some places even saltier than seawater. These provide a diversity of unique habitats. The Coorong and Lakes areas supports many nationally and internationally significant plants and animals, including birds, fish and frogs. Of particular importance are the water birds that visit the Coorong. The area not only provides habitat for many local species, but also for migratory wading birds, many flying in from as far away as Alaska, high in the Northern Hemisphere. It is a key breeding site for many birds, including the Australian pelican, the crested tern, and fairy tern. All bird species tell, tell us a story. You only got to look at them while they carry on. If rain's on its way, you'll see the pelicans fly across from South Pelican Island. Some of the birds I see from Siberia just fly out into the Kurok. You'd see certain species not coming back because of the way it was. The Coorong and Lakes Alexandrina and Albert wetland site has been formally recognised as a Ramsar wetland of international importance. This listing signifies its value not only for Australia, but the entire world. The Ramsar Convention's mission is the conservation and wise use of all wetlands through local, regional and national actions and international cooperation as a contribution towards achieving sustainable development throughout the world meaning we all have a part to play. The health of the Coorong and the lakes is linked with the overall health of the Murray-Darling Basin, which is under stress. The southern Coorong in particular has suffered long-term decline. This is a result of limited inflow as less water reaches the end of the system. It was further damaged by the millennium drought. That obviously impacted a lot on the on the waters, the water levels, uh, the salinity levels, which affected a lot of the food plants. Um, at one stage, it got up to about six times saltier than seawater. Well, the biggest problem has been water flows, lack of flows into the Coorong fresh water, be it from the River Murray and, and from the southeast. Those flows have dried up. There's not the quantities of water, and it's affected the Coorong mainly the southern lagoon. The connection between the two lagoons is it's so restricted now. And, over the summer months, well, late summer, early autumn, it would actually disconnect. There would be a disconnect there. We're seeing these algal blooms, whether they're phytoplankton or filamentous algae, and that's a sign that the systems become unbalanced and that too much of the nutrients are floating around and not bound up in long-term biomass, the aquatic plants or some of the animals. So. It's a symptom of the problem in the system where the nutrients are fluctuating too fast and that's not good for the system in the long term and it also means that it's harder for the animals to, to reside there and some of them can't live in those conditions. These extremely high nutrient and high salt conditions have affected the entire food web of the southern Coorong. 
nutrient cycling and key primary production processes have been disrupted, reducing the quality and availability of habitat and food sources. Well, the Kurong used to look like it was beautiful, clear water all the way down to the southern, southern lagoon, which is Salt Creek. You look at it now, you can walk across this place where we normally had a boat to go across, or we swam. Uh, we used to catch kelp, black brim, catfish, tench. They're not there no more. Not no more. Not no more. There's reduced numbers of birds in the system. That's well documented and the distribution of fish in the system has changed over time and there's fewer invertebrates as well. The South Lagoon currently provides habitat for only the most hardy species, the ones that have been able to tolerate the changed conditions. We need to work together to return it to a resilient and naturally variable system that can provide habitat for a diversity of life. While we need to restore the Kurong to conserve its biodiversity, plant and animal life, the Kurong is also important for people. I've been coming down here since I was six months old, which is some 50 plus years ago. <laughs> some of the other elders from Raukan, uh, I used to go out with them. Uh, they teach me different things, how to hunt and how to go about it. You don't take that species, you leave this species. As a fisherman, the difference for me to nearly everyone else is that I work entirely with nature. Many other people also value the Kurong. Farmers, fishermen and tourist operators make their livelihoods here. Shack owners, campers and other visitors come here to sleep on the edge of the wild ocean, kayak in the lagoons, explore the sand dunes and go bird watching and fishing or just come to relax in this amazing place of wild nature. If we do not act to restore the Kurong, the environment loses, people lose, and the world loses. Do we stand by as the Kurong becomes another part of a disappearing natural world? Or can we play a part in its restoration? The Kurong has had a long history of changing conditions and uh, the ability of the system to recover from those changing conditions has waned over time. So where we are now is we're seeing recovery from the millennium drought, but we've had the long-term shift of the system as a result of um, that, those changes. And we're trying to get it back to be healthier for the birds and the fish and all the aquatic organisms that live there. So there's a big research program which has six or seven components and our component of it is to look at the aquatic plants, the filamentous algae, the water column algae and all the algae that grow on the sediment and try to understand how to move away from the fast high turnover nuisance algae and phytoplankton blooms to be the longer term stable seagrass rupia community that helps keep the sediment settled and the water column clear. While we can see what the underlying problem is and we know what we would like the South Lagoon to look like again, how we get there is not simple. This is what we believe the food web of the Southern Kurong looks like and how the parts interact. The primary producers supporting the systems are the aquatic plants that provide food and habitat for the invertebrates, tiny creatures that live in the water and sediment, and some bird species also feed on the plants. Some of the other birds and fish feed on the invertebrates, and some birds eat the fish. All of this is underpinned by nutrients, salinity and water availability. And if these are out of kilter, nuisance species like filamentous algae can dominate the system, which do not provide quality habitat or food sources for the higher levels in the food web. While we know this is how it works at a basic level, there is still a lot about this complex system that we don't fully understand. It's not rocket science. It's much more complicated than that. It is important that work to restore a healthy Kurong is based on the latest science, as well as the experience and knowledge of traditional owners and the local community. 
Many community members have contributed to the science and have been playing their part in helping to restore the Coorong. The involvement of these citizen scientists allows data collection over wider time and space scales than possible by using scientists alone and adds important local interpretation. I see it as very important that people get involved on a community basis to assist the scientists who can't be out there every day and and make sure that the information is fed back through the appropriate channels to the people that make the decisions. When I'm out birding, um, I, I enjoy the birding aspect of it, uh, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it, but um, I, I really enjoy contributing to our knowledge of Australia's birds. So I contribute through Bird Data, which is you know the online database for Australian birds. Um, I just think it's really important to put you know that local knowledge, everybody knows their own local patch but I think that's important to put that into somewhere where it can be used for a, a greater purpose, I suppose, and to, uh, um, in the end, that that can be used as scientific value because they use all of those millions of reports to be able to, um, to track species on a nationwide level or, or whatever, you know, things that are common today could be rare tomorrow. So uh, it's really important to, to get that information where it can be used. I'm in a unique position that, because of what I see on a daily basis, over 30 years, I've seen what works on the ground, so I'm able to advise in a lot of different areas. I've seen the Coorong gradually degrade over the years, and that's got me involved in doing something about it. I wish, in hindsight, it would have been good a lot of years back, a few years back. I mean, I just took it as for granted, and now I can see the problems with it. I've been out with Adelaide University a couple of times, taking out there to do soil samples, and in amongst the mud and the slush. Volunteering with Friends of the Corong gave us um, the opportunity to get that information that we wouldn't have otherwise got. And that's the same with citizen science projects. They give us an avenue to um, learn about things and they feed us the information that is exactly what we want um, in return for just very minor bits of work that we can do where we live so easy. So it's a really good fit for us. Working with our Aboriginal engagement officer through the department, um, we started to do some Malifaux uh, monitoring and surveys. We also do some other Malifaux surveys uh, in the surrounding parks, a bit more inland, um, but also in the coral. Um, we're also starting to work towards um, develop, developing some monitoring, monitoring plans uh, for the swans. We also do some Cockle monitoring, which is very important to Aboriginal people, um, important food source. It's been good to get out in country a bit more and see how these animals and birds and plants are coping in the environment at the moment. Park staff here in the Coorong have been doing a fantastic job over the last few years. We've really noticed it out doing surveys for uh, the parrots uh, coming across, the amount of boxthorn and, and other weedy species like spiny rush that they've managed to get on top of. If we can succeed in returning the system to a healthier state, what we'll see is more birds coming back, we'll see more rupia around the system and we'll see a clearer water and a cleaner overall view of the system and uh, it'll be more productive. The Coorong needs all of us to help to restore it to a beautiful landscape teeming with abundant and diverse populations of water birds, fish and plants. You can help out by joining citizen science activities or other environmental projects around the Coorong. Why not visit the Coorong and immerse yourself in the wonder of the place? You can also help by taking an interest in the health of the Murray-Darling Basin System. Even if you don't live anywhere near the Coorong, there are citizen science projects and conservation projects active around Australia and throughout the world where you can help to address local environmental issues. We can all make a difference one way or another. It is up to us to ensure our amazing and beautiful natural world remains for all to enjoy and provides a sustainable future for all the living creatures that rely on it. Well, what I'd like to see, and not only myself, but other Ngarindiri people, the Murundi people as well, we all got to play a part in 
trying to help to restore it, you know, just like to see a better outcome for everybody, you know.